G'day, it's Trigger, and welcome to Gun Guide. This is a series where I'll give you the stats and best loadouts for every weapon in Battlefield 2042. In this episode, we'll be looking at another one of my personal favourites, the K30 submachine gun. This weapon is unlocked at level 53 and has the highest firepower and rate of fire in its category. Let's start with the damage profile. Our base damage ranges from 22 to 13, which translates to a 5 to 9 shot kill. However, if the enemy has an additional 20 health due to armor, the shots to kill increases to 6 to 10. Headshots double our base damage profile, giving us a headshot damage range of 44 to 26. Unfortunately, this means two shot headshot kills are not possible with this weapon. Nevertheless, the two times headshot multiplier means you want to be aiming for the head or mixing a headshot into your spray if possible. As for bullet velocity, our base bullet velocity is 420 meters per second. This is a moderate value for an SMG, but relatively low compared to other weapon categories. This means that tracking with the K30 is more difficult at longer ranges as more leading is required. Moving on to ranges, and our shots to kill differs for each ammo type. The weapon's base high power ammo has a 5 shot kill potential to 15 meters, making this fast firing SMG very powerful at short range. A 6 shot kill is possible between 15 and 25 meters, a 7 shot kill is possible between 25 and 35 meters, and 8 shots are required between 35 and 45 meters. After 45 meters, the K30 with high power ammo always deals 13 damage, so an 8 shot kill is possible at any range. As for standard ammo, there is a 5 shot kill potential to 15 meters, 6 shots to 20 meters, 7 shots to 35 meters, and 8 shots to 75 meters. After 75 meters, a 9 shot kill is possible at any range with standard ammo equipped. Finally, the subsonic ammo also has a 5 shot kill potential to 15 meters. 6 shots to 35 meters, 7 shots to 45 meters, 8 shots to 55 meters, and 9 shots are required at any range above 55 meters. Remember that armor takes an extra shot to kill for every ammo type at every range. With this in mind, the K30's most effective range is 0 to 45 meters. At close range, you'll very rarely find yourself losing gunfights due to the K30's fast rate of fire and 5 shot kill potential. However, if you are further than 45 meters, you'll often be outgunned by weapons with less damage falloff, including the AK-24, M5A3, and PKP. So, as always, try to keep your engagement distance in mind when using this weapon. Speaking of rate of fire, we have a base rate of fire of 1150 rounds per minute, which is extremely fast. In fact, the fastest in the game. This means our time to kill potential clocks in at about 200 milliseconds, assuming we're hitting all 5 shots under 15 meters. However, even if you're more than 45 meters away, you're looking at a time to kill of 300 to 400 milliseconds when hitting all 8 or 9 shots, depending on the ammo type. Therefore, the K30's fast rate of fire means it can outcompete any other weapon at short range, whilst it can outshoot other weapons at medium range if you are accurate and mix in some headshots. This makes the K30 a very powerful short to medium range option and is well suited to rush and close quarters objectives on conquest and breakthrough. Next up we have hipfire. The K30 has a relatively tight hipfire spread and as such I'd recommend hip firing this weapon at very close range. Moving on to idle sway and there is little to no sway when aimed down sight. There is no sway when static and it's almost imperceivable when moving. Although it has a strong rate of fire, recoil is difficult to master with this weapon despite it being buffed in the recent weapon spread update. Its vertical recoil pattern is straight up, while its horizontal recoil moves randomly to the left and right during a spray. Together, this means that the K30's recoil moves smoothly upwards but with horizontal randomness, making it relatively difficult to predict and control. As for weapon handling, the K30 has a base aim down sight time of approximately 267 milliseconds. In terms of sprint out time, there is the same 267 millisecond delay for normal sprint, but there is a slightly longer 417 millisecond delay for the traversal sprint. In other words, you may be better suited using the normal sprint with the K30 to avoid an aim down sight time penalty. Next up, we have magazine capacity. The standard K30 mag is the 20 round high power mag, which translates to approximately one to two kills per mag. This is a poor return for a base SMG magazine. We also get 147 rounds or 7 mags in reserve. There are also several other mags available for this weapon, including the 30 round subsonic mag, the 40 round standard issue extended mag, the 30 round high power extended mag, and the 50 round standard issue drum mag. Let's have a look at reload times. 
Our base high power mag reload time is 1.4 seconds, which is average for an SMG. The subsonic mag also takes 1.4 seconds. Using the 40 round standard extended mag will increase your ammo capacity at a slight cost of reload time with a 1.5 second reload time. However, the 30 round high power extended mag and the 50 round standard drum mag exhibit this trade off more heavily with both mags having a 1.7 second reload time. Now moving on to mobility, and we've got a standard movement speed for submachine guns, which is very fast compared to ARs, LMGs, and sniper rifles. And the same can be said for aim down sight strafe speed, with a fast strafe speed compared to other weapon categories. Having tier 1 the K30 and extensively tested the different optic, ammo, underbarrel, and barrel attachments, here is my favourite K30 loadout. For the optic, it's once again the Fusion Hollow. It's my go-to sight for almost all automatic weapons in the game. As I've said previously, it provides the best clarity with a single red dot so it's very easy to keep on target and it doesn't have any distracting visual elements. Furthermore, it's 1.25 times magnification is perfect for close to medium range engagements. The K8 Hollow is also a great alternative if you prefer a green reticle. The ATAR Hollow is also a good option if you want a slightly greater 1.5 times magnification. As for ammo, I prefer to use the standard drum mag. The drum mag has a decent reload time at 1.7 seconds, has the highest magazine capacity at 50 rounds, and increases the rate of fire to 1200. This translates to 3 to 4 kills per mag with a sub 300 millisecond time to kill at both short and medium range. However, it is worth knowing that the drum mag has a hidden drawback of decreased ADS strafe speed. Therefore, I'd recommend equipping the 40 round standard extended mag in your second slot and testing the difference for yourself. Finally, I recommend selecting the high power extended mag in your third slot, in case you run out of ammo for your standard mags. Next up, we have the underbarrel attachment. The BCG light grip is the best option here. You will very rarely be standing completely still when using the K30. You're more likely to be making the most of its high mobility by AD strafing and jump peeking. The increased accuracy while moving provided by the BCG light grip will allow you to take full advantage of the K30's mobility. I then recommend selecting the LS1 laser sight in your second slot. Combining the laser with the standard drum mag makes for a very powerful hip fire at close quarters. Finally, the Cobra grip is a solid third slot option to improve your accuracy if static. However, I doubt you'll ever need to use this attachment. Now moving on to the barrel and you should choose the Warhawk compensator in your first slot. As I showed earlier in the recoil testing, the K30 has random horizontal recoil. As such, the Warhawk compensator works to reduce this. Although we gain some vertical recoil, this is far easier to control than the random horizontal recoil. Pairing the Warhawk compensator with the standard drum mag and the BCG light grip creates an S tier weapon from 0 to 45 meters. You'll very rarely find yourself outshot over this range. I then recommend selecting the Champion Muzzle Break in your second slot if you're having difficulty with the vertical recoil. Finally, I suggest choosing the PB Heavy Suppressor in your third slot if you're trying to stay off the minimap whilst flanking. That's all I have on the K30. Do you think it's the best close range weapon? Feel free to provide your thoughts in the comments section below. If you did enjoy the video, a like is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe to see more gun guide videos. I also stream most nights on Twitch at TriggerBF and anyone is welcome to come join. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video where I'll be covering the MP9 submachine gun. Feel free to stick around and check out some more K30 gameplay.